What's going on, YouTube? It's Seen a place to be children, Mr. Andy. Back to give you guys a SmackDown review from March 1st, the first day of March 2024. And joining me is the man, the myth, the reality, the revolutionary freshman flow. What's going on, y'all? We back to normal, man. We back to normal. Black history month over, man. I, well, we I, I mean, you know, like we do, we do Black 365 over here. But I understand, yes, I understand acknowledging the most of that because, you know, today. Is the first month of Women's History Month. Okay. So we, you know, we, we ain't gotta forget about our sisters, you know, out there also. That's why I did, hey, for those who didn't see, I did a reaction to all the women's entrances in W two K twenty four. Thank you guys for all joining the uh, live chat today. That was actually pretty fun. That was that's the biggest live chat I've had on this channel. So thank you guys, uh, very much for that. So. Mm -hmm. We here to talk about SmackDown. I know I don't often do the SmackDown overall reviews consistently because I'm just like, yo, sometimes I be too busy to, to, to do them, and I, I, I talk about stuff that happened on the podcast. But this is a noteworthy SmackDown, a very noteworthy SmackDown because The Rock says, "F your story, Cody Rose. F it." Mm -hmm. And you ain't going to be sitting there challenging The Rock because The Rock is going to challenge you. He got a message for you tonight. On SmackDown, not only that, best friends. You you, you would have thought Bailey had an ally, but she don't. And Dakota Kai turned on her. We're kind of seeing what we're, we're, we're getting closer to seeing what the map out of WrestleMania is starting to look like. We're too much is like we we gonna make this, even though we got a lot of injuries from CM Punk to Charlotte. We got a lot of injuries that kind of riddled our car, but don't worry. We're going to find a way to make this thing spectacular. And I think they are taking a crazy pivot that is going, I think it's going to pay off, in my personal opinion. Would you Would you agree with that, Kufa? Yeah, I agree. Wholeheartedly. I'm about to say, because at first I was like, man, WrestleMania in Philly was going to be unstoppable. Because one, this is the first time we've come to Philly since 99. But then, CM Punk goes Jeez. down. I know CM Punk, Charlotte goes down, CM Punk goes down, and Brock is, you know, out the question. Brock is gone. <laughs> Which, that means we have three matches that was going to be like top tier matches off the card. From Punk and Seth, to Guther and Brock, to Bianca and Charlotte, off the card. But they said, no, -uh, hold on, hold on. We got room. We're going to do what we got to do tonight because tonight they really did that. So we about to get all up into that, man. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button. Make sure y'all hit the like button because we're going to be still here talking about WrestleMania. 2K24 comes out on Tuesday. I got the special edition. Y'all know I got a special edition, okay? So it comes out uh, for, for those who got the special edition. It comes out on Tuesday. For the standard edition, it comes out next Friday. So I'm going to let y'all know right now. The 2K news is going to be coming, okay? I even invited Q Flow over there, you know, you know, to play, uh, to play. I know he don't usually play the wrestling games like that, though, but this one, this one's looking tight. This one's looking really good. That ain't true. I just didn't play uh, 21. There wasn't one. Huh? There wasn't a 21. There wasn't? What was the What was the one that was the really bad one? 20. That was 20? Okay, then that's the one I skipped. Yeah, because it was so bad, they skipped the year. Then they came back with 22 and 23. And, and the 22 and 23 has been the one that using the new technology, the new fight system and all that stuff like that. Wait, I could be wrong. What was the one? All right. This this was dumb. A, but it was like extra. It was like extra arcadey. And you had like the little power up punch. 19. OK. All right. Then, yeah. Yeah. I skipped 20 then. Yeah. Because 20 was terrible. But. No, since since they have revamped revamped it and brought back in like you know GM mode, like I said, me and my son been balling on GM mode, and after all the changes that they're they, they bringing in this game, I'm gonna say, yo, we about to really go at it, and that that mode ended up being more fun than it had any right to be. Okay, <laughs> so this is somebody somebody who never really was in the GM mode like that, but we mm -hmm. really we really had fun with that, so. You know what I'm saying? If you got time, you should probably try it also. Because it, it ain't about us like physically fighting in the ring. It's all about strategy. It's about booking. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. But yeah, so I already invited Q-Flow over to try the game out. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of content news today. Especially with lead up to WrestleMania. Especially with the podcast over there. We about to go wrestling heavy. And y'all, if y'all in Philly, or if y'all coming to Philly, 
for WrestleMania. Yo, come look at y- y'all. See what the nerd code of hoodie on, bro. Yo, come scoop us out. Say what's yeah. up. Say how we done this before. When, oh, I went to Icons of Wrestling. Or when I went to the uh, House of Hardcore shows, I had people come up to me talking about some. Hey, yo, nerd coalition, what's going on? I'm just like, hey, show the love. So if you see me and Q flow out there, you know, show the love. Don't come up on no what? bullshit though. But I'm just saying. <laughs> pull up because I'm you know Q, I'm about to go old school I'm about to go get some more cards made and be like hey y'all everybody take a handful and pass them out at Wrestlemania hell yeah so we about to get back a bit of this but right now let's talk about Smackdown real quick because hey yo we got a lot to talk about Smackdown opens not closes opens with the bloodline they come out Roman Reigns is out there Jimmy Solo the wise man Paul Heyman and he's out. He's out there saying for Anaheim. Uh, wait, where were they at tonight? Some place in Arizona. They were in right? Glendale. Glendale, Glendale, Arizona. Acknowledge him, but and he wouldn't get the response that he wanted. He was like, "Hey, yo, I'm gonna do this one more time. If I if, you, if it don't get right, I'm out of here. Y'all saw me. I did my part. Look, I'm only here because that's all I don't get fired, and I'm about to be mm-hmm. out of here." But Paul Heyman stops him. Says, "Hold on, we can't get out of here because the Rock got to come." After this commercial break, well, The Rock came, comes back to Rock, first of all, directly after commercial. I'm like, damn, exactly. When The, the Rock comes out there, bruh, the, the Rock was in the back and he pulled out this truck in his house that said 1999 on it, right? And he opened that truck, he said, Everything in here, I need y'all to remaster it. The man <laughs> came out there with the $500,000 Versace shoes. I'm telling you, this man looked like a whole Cuban drug lord ceiling painting. That's what it looked like. And like you said, the lemon pepper steppers. The, the rock came out there. Steppers. Honestly, he went to Razor's house. <laughs> you said he went to Razor's house? <laughs> yes. That was a Razor Ramon fit. <laughs> he said, man, he ain't here. Let me uh let me let, borrow that. Yeah, let me borrow that real quick. Comes out there and actually, the fans actually cheering the rock, believe it or not. Yep. He comes out there and uh he does his rock stick. He uh talk, talks about, you know, that 10 miles from here is about Phoenix, right? He said, look, fun fact, you're going to enjoy this, that it is said that here in Phoenix or, or close to Phoenix is the is the biggest city, or say, for crack usage. And cocaine Phoenix, and meth. Cocaine and meth. That's what, so, uh, that's what the crowd, you know, sometimes booing him if that that. So... Now The Rock is out there to, to, to issue Cody Rose. He said, you know, oh, Cody Rose, you know, screw your stupid story. You think you can go one-on-one with the great one? You, you think you can go one-on-one with The Rock? He said, look, look, little boy. All right, well, he didn't say little boy. He said, well, little boy, you know what I'm saying? The Rock will destroy him, okay? And he says, we're we not going to be doing that. That's not, that's not how this is going to that. So if, if you want to go one-on-one with The Rock and you're calling out The Rock, The Rock's answer is no. But he has... A counter proposal for Cody Rose, and he says, "You know, Cody, you can get that clown emoji, uh, that walking clown emoji, Seth Rollins." And on night one of WrestleMania, you will have the biggest tag match in WrestleMania history, which it technically will be, and it will be Cody Rose and Seth Rollins. Versus Roman Reigns and The Rock. Now, if you looked over in the corner, Roman Reigns' face is just like, like it, it's kind of like, yo, bro, really? Like I ain't trying to work two nights. I barely come here for one night. You trying to have me work two nights? <laughs> Seriously. Right. So, The Rock was say, so The Rock said, it's not gonna be any, uh, it's not gonna be just any tag match. No, it's not gonna be any, just ta- any tag match. It's gonna be this. If, if. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins beats Roman and The Rock. Then the blood on night two for his championship match, the bloodline is barred from ringside. He said Jimmy, he said Solo, he said Wise Man, and he said The Rock. No Wise Man. Everybody's mm-hmm. banned from ringside. You can go ahead and finish your story by yourself. But that's not going to happen because when we win. When the bloodline wins the matchup, be bloodline rules. The Rock will be out there sitting up a chair next to his good friend Pat McAvee. 
He'll sit down on the match. Anybody <laughs> can interfere. There'll be like no basically no disqualifications. And that's will be and, and and they will dominate over Cody. And if Cody does not accept this challenge, he said the the Rock has the power. The Rock in the back, he is the head of the board. I am your boss, and I don't really give a shit about what anybody in the back says about it. Or you know, I don't care about no general manager or no you know, uh, no vice president. No, no, no vice president. And Triple H got to say in the back. They dropped Triple H, and he got Triple H chain out of it. So after that, The Rock goes to do his "If You Smell the Rock Smoking," but then Roman puts his hand on his wrist and says, "Hold on, play." Hold on, big dog. Hold, hold on, play. And The Rock looks up. He says, hold on, man. I, I need one thing from you. I need one thing from you. And that is for you to acknowledge me. I'm already happy <coughs> with Roman calling The Rock out because I, I've been saying before, Roman, since The Rock came back, been looking like little brother. He been calling him out, out little brother, but this man has been your dominant champion, and this man took a backseat immediately when The Rock came in. Well, now it's time for him to be like, hold on, player. Acknowledge me. So The Rock said, look at took takes off his glasses, and then he says, Roman Reigns, The Rock acknowledges you as the tribal chief. So... Then he said, "Let me explain something to you, idiots out there." What the? Huh? My fault. Your background. <laughs> oh yeah. No, he said, "Let me explain something to you, idiots out there." When, when it was because they started chanting the rock that you sold out, and he said, "Let me explain something to you. This here is family, and for family, we would do anything for each other." Now go back to smoking some crack. If you smell, and then. He passed the microphone off to Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns grabbed it and said, "What the bloodline is cooking." Then he put the ones up. Now the Rock did have that nut ass L out, but then he did close it in and put up the one. And that was the opening half hour segment on SmackDown already. Q flow automatically jump, jump off the bed. How did you enjoy that segment? And I, I need to know what do you think is going to happen at WrestleMania. Um, that that's how you open up a SmackDown. Damn sure is. My God, like the the rent was due tonight. My Lord, I, first of the month. I get it. Uh huh. I get it. The rent was due tonight. It, 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 right. it, you know what's funny? I don't know because, like I said, when it comes to the game, you don't really follow like that. But they just released a Mirage trailer yesterday, right? Or or mm-hmm. um. I did, was it yesterday or today? I believe it was. And I did, yesterday it was. And funny thing is, Roman Reigns in, in the storyline gives up his championship and he goes to go to Hollywood with The Rock, but then he comes back because he's like, yo, I'm the landlord and the rent is due. No, in, in the in the trailer, so I, so it's it's ironic that that we that that we that you using that analogy. That's I just want to point that out. That's funny. But go ahead. Um. Yeah. Nah. The rent was due, and sure enough, they paid it with this one segment. Uh. As far as what do I think? I I, I hmm. I either see Rock screwing Roman in the tag match. Or they win, and because it's anything goes, that means anything goes against Roman as well. Yeah. And Rock could screw him there. That's what that that's where I'm leaning to. I'm like, okay, so as soon as he said bloodline rules, I said there's no way. There's no way the rock now this is the rock we talk about here, okay? The, despite uh what, what people may even feel about the rock recently, or even what I said about the rock recently. The Rock is not going to be only on one at a WrestleMania. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Even Stone Cold, when he came back for the face of Kevin Owens, he came back night two to give Vince that terrible ass stunner. Because when, when, when Pat McAfee took on Austin Theory, he, he was there for two nights. Rock's not going to miss night two. So automatically, right. when he said that the bloodline would be barred from ringside, I said, they're losing. 
they lose it. Because now the, the, the tables are stacked against Cody. You're not having Roman Reigns lose twice. You're not having Roman Reigns lose Saturday, even if, if, if he don't take the pin and lose Sunday. It's not happening with Roman. And then if that's the right. case, that means The Rock got to get pinned. The Rock's not getting pinned. Not by Seth and not by Cody. At least I don't think so. Let's put it that way. Because as soon as somebody will just, you know, tag me in this and talk about something. Hey, remember what you said? Hey, look, in my opinion, I don't think that's going to happen. But I can definitely see them beating Cody. Because you ain't going to beat the world champ because he got he to have the match against Drew the next night. So I see them beating Cody. And now the deck, the deck is stacked against Cody. Whereas now you can do that turn on Roman at Sunday at Mania. That's what that's what I really see that that's probably going to happen. Mm-hmm. But to be honest with you, man, I'm excited for the t- I'm excited for the tag match on night one. We gonna be there night one. Yep. So I'm we'll more excited for because, like I said, when we got tickets, I was like, "Hey, look, it has shown since these these double nights WrestleManias that first night has always been the better, the stronger of nights. They have been good mm-hmm. events, you know, but but night one has always been the strongest, and they coming out with it. And I said, man, I didn't know what the main event was going to be night one, but I was like, but they've been teasing the Seth Rollins thing. I'm like, they, they can finally give Seth Rollins his main event. You can finally see The Rock on the show night one. We can finally see Cody like like we can get the, we get all this stuff night one." That's insane. And I think this is a great way to pivot because I'm still saying if it was just had been Roman and Rock, I think I think now they would have turned on that match. And now since we got we get co everybody's getting what they want, basically. Just too much find a way to give everybody what they want. You want to see the Rock wrestle? You probably want to see him wrestle Roman, but now we're gonna get the dream match tag team match. I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm here for on, on on night one. So you get you get to see the rock in action. You get to see Cody, Robert, and then you still get to see that match. Seth gets to do it, you know. So, yeah, bring that shit. That 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 is going to be it. That's going to be that's going to be interesting. Do I still think? The, I mean, and it's also good because you put the Rock in a tag match, you put Roman in a tag match. I understand Seth going to have to work twice, and Roman going to have to work twice, and Cody going to have to work twice. But a tag match, you do fifty percent of the work. Yeah. Opposed to, you know, a straight one on one matchup. And I think it's gonna be a crazy tag team matchup. I think it's gonna be a lot of lot of things going on. I think I am actually excited for it. Cause it's gonna be happening on night one. So I I I I'm just trying to so imagine question. what that car gonna look like on night one. Question. Yeah. Does Priest do the smart thing and cash in after this? Like on night one? Yeah. I think he went to night two. Because if you cash it in on night one, uh, uh, just to let y'all know, my fingers are up. Technically, by storyline and WWE rules, if we are scheduled to have a World Heavyweight Championship match on night two, that means somebody got to defend that title. That means he had to face it against Drew McIntyre. Oh yeah, you're you, right. You, you can't right. have just no, no world title match when Drew won the right to win uh, face for the world championship. So and it just wouldn't work out with just fans who who, who build up to see Seth and McIntyre to go see Damian Priest. No, it's not gonna work. However, night two, after Seth had had a he wrestled the first night already, and now he got to wrestle the second night. That's when I can see him taking an opportunity because that'd be the smart thing to do. Because now he wrestled back to back. Mm-hmm. He's going to have a physical match with McIntyre. He's going to have a physical tag team match. He still, he, he just got back to healthy, but still, days can just go wrong. You know what I'm saying? And hell, that is an opportunity for Priest to cash in, and then he wins. He don't have to wrestle. He's done. Now you got to earn the right to face me. So the the smart thing in storyline would be to cash in on night two. That's how I feel it's going. But yeah, awesome opening segment. I know we spent most of the time talking about the opening segment. We're going. I'm just going to go right through the results they had here. Uh, they had an opening match of Tiff Time 
taking on Naomi. I thought they had a really good matchup. Tim, uh, Tim, excuse me. Tiffany won with the the best moonsault ever to Naomi. It sucks that I got to see my girl Naomi lose, especially when she just came back. But uh, it's Tiffany Stratton. She's getting pushed to the moon right now. I do want to mm-hmm. see Naomi get some more wins in her belt. Don't just don't just bring her back just to swander her because she was doing really well in TNA. So I, I really want to see her be be respect be, be respected. I'm hoping this is not a thing where she got to you know eat shit because she walked out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to try to have hold that against her or anything like that. Uh, Dakota Kai and Bailey was in a tag match to take on the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kyrie Zayn. And as the match is going on, uh, Bailey's taking the most of the heat for the matchup. Uh, the, by the way, Dakota's clear to wrestle. And when she, after she fights on the Kabuki Warriors, she goes for the hot tag Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai jumps down off the apron. And stares at Bailey, and I knew that was going to happen. I knew Dakota was going to turn on Bailey, and Bailey, Bailey realized it, and just like crap. And then after that, uh, she loses, and then they, <coughs> excuse me, they uh, rest of damage control. Well, actually, it wasn't even lost. It, 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 damage control just beat down Bailey while Eo taunted her in her face. So, but that doesn't. In there, because in the back, when Damage Control with Dakota Kai is celebrating, they run right into Jay Cargill. And she just staring at EO. First of all, Jade is towering over these women. Like, did you see that, Q? Mm hmm. Like, I'm saying, like, I'm like, yo, how short are y'all? Because Jade is towering over She's these girls. She's tall, yeah, man. Yeah, and I'm like, yikes, but then, because uh, Nick, because Nick Aldis was like, yo, y'all the same height? It's time to say, but. <laughs> uh, but uh, he said, "No, he said, don't, don't worry about it, Jay. Come with me." Which looks like Jay gonna probably be signed to SmackDown. Here's what I think is happening. I think we may get another tag match, bro. For what? Mania. I'm th- Give me the name. Okay, I, 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 I'm throwing a curve. I'm telling you, I'm throwing a curve. But here's the thing: Jade and Bianca versus the Kabuki Warriors. Ooh. For them tag titles, Ooh. I'm not mad at that because <clears throat> it's too early. As much as I, I know, everybody wants it or, or they want to see it, and everybody you know WrestleMania is full of dream matches. I say, but you, you, what's the point of having dream matches with no build? Then you have an AEW problem. So, Triple H is all about build. You you, you got to start to set you somewhere. And it would be good to showcase Jay in a one-on-one match this year. Just let her get her feet wet. Kind of like what he did with Ronda Rousey. She had a tag match in her debut. Mm-hmm. Get Jade and Bianca the team. Because they, they look down at each other at, at, the, at the Royal Rumble. She cuts off damage control. She she looked at Io. We know damn well she didn't come for the championship. Io got Bailey to deal with, right? So that, that ain't the thing. But the Kabuki Wars got them tag team titles there. And I'm sorry, no disrespect to, to Chelsea Green and Piper Niven or Ra- Raquel Rodriguez and insert partner here, but none of them things seem inter- inter- interesting to me at all, right? What, is, what, what seems interesting to mm-hmm. me is uh, Bianca Belair still has some problems with um, damn. I don't know if she still has problems with damage control, but she can get some help, and Bianca never won a tag team titles before. And so she's not in the title picture right now. Her, her, her opponent, Charlotte, is down. What else is there for Bianca to do? I I understand, you know, there was they, uh, how she attacked Tiffany Stratton uh, so vigorously at Elimination Chamber and having, like, her versus Tiff. But the thing is, with that is, I know Bianca's kind of, like, bulletproof, but do you want Bianca taking a loss, like, right now on right. Tiff? And, but Tiff don't need to lose right now. You see what I'm saying? So you, mm-hmm. you put some in a hole, like took you somebody different, do something different at that moment. So I'm thinking, I'm just this is this is a left field guess, but with just with that low stare, because Triple H likes Easter eggs. So with that low stare down, I'm thinking Cargill and Bel Air versus Kabuki Warriors for the tag team championships. I'm here for it. I could definitely see them doing like. Remember when Bianca went against uh, Sasha, and she mm-hmm. did the press slam. And she walked Sasha up the stairs to do her back in the ring. Showing mm-hmm. strength. Jay did the same thing in AEW to uh, Red Velvet, I think it was. 
Imagine them each having a Kabuki Warrior in their hands. Walk, uh, press slamming them, walking up, the, walking up the stairs, back into the ring. Bro. Bro. Don't do that to me. They teasing me because I don't think I don't think Choice wants Jade to miss WrestleMania neither. Just saying. In my personal opinion, I know. Like I said, it, it could be wait, wait, trade left field. Uh, then we have a street fight between Carlito and Santos Escobar, and uh, I think it was a pretty decent street fight. I mean, it was a it was a SmackDown street fight. Let's put it that way. There's a table set up in the ring, but then Legato Del Fantasma, which is uh. Garza and Humberto come out and to you know beat down Carlito, but then here comes LWO of Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro, and they come out and they all start brawling. And in the meanwhile, they leave Santos in the ring by himself, and then here Rey Mysterio's music hits. He comes down with crutches as the Gato Del Fantasma is going to attack Rey Mysterio. Mysterio starts beating the shit out of them with the crutches. <coughs> it start, starts beating them down, so. As he's getting closer, uh, we, we see he's not injured anymore. Uh, yeah, he's he's really like beating them down with the, with these crutches. He gets into the ring and he hits Santos. Uh, uh, Santos tries to hit uh, Mysterio. He ducks and then he gets a spit uh, apple in his face. Gets a backstabber, puts him into the ropes. Mysterio hits a six one nine, and then Carlito hits like a like a little little soft spot, but to do the table that's set up in the ring and wins the matchup. And the LWO are victorious, which now gives, which is like, okay, we build the mania, so we know we about to get that Mysterio versus Santos match. Mm-hmm. And which they have been saving for that, so that should be a good matchup if they just let Santos and Mysterio just go out there and do that, do that luchador thing. So I'm, I'm hyped for that. Do you think that's where it's going? And if so, would you, are you excited to see it that way? Go down that I way. I think it is. It- they, they they haven't had a match yet, right? No. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm here for it then. You know, not not to my not to my knowledge. They, they, they could have. Uh, you know what? They did have a match before when it was like a, a mutual friend thing when they were still part oh, of the yeah. together. But yeah, but they ain't have a match with no animosity. Yeah, is that you know with with, with a little heat behind it? Mm. Braun Breaker takes on uh, Zion Quinn, who used to be in NXT. I used to call him the Street Fighter. Or the Tekken character. Guess what? He looked like a mm-hmm. fighting game character. Mm-hmm. Braun Breaker. He do like a Tekken. Like Kazuya. Exactly. Exa- <laughs> <laughs> Braun Breaker uh, beats uh, Zion Quinn like within seconds. He just hits him with a spear. Now, he- here's my thing. In my personal opinion, first of all, <clears throat> I'm, not going, I'm not afraid to admit it. Me and Q. <sighs> I'm about to call you Q Bird. Me and Q <laughs> Flo are Goldberg fans. I will attack Goldberg when he does stupid shit or don't need to be in, he don't need to be in a match because I know he's old. But in my personal opinion, the best spear in wrestling was Goldberg. The best spear in wrestling is Goldberg. And behind him is Braun Breaker. Yep. Sorry, Roman. Sorry, Bobby. I'm not sorry, Edge. Jay got one of the worst. But sorry about that too. But those spears don't come close to Goldberg's. But Braun Breaker, since Goldberg's out there, Braun Breaker got the second, got the best spear in the business. Tonight yeah. wasn't one of them nights. Because I don't know if uh, Zion Quinn didn't sell it right. He didn't get the momentum or Braun Breaker. I, I don't know. It just looked not the greatest. It didn't look that impactful to the point where I was like, he should be losing to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Honestly, but Braun Breaker's getting pushed to the moon. I don't know what plans they got for Braun Breaker, but he get pushed to the moon. Definitely. <clears throat> they made a uh, the, the New Catch Republic meets with Nick Aldis wanted to do whatever it takes to win a tag team match at Rus- a shot at WrestleMania 40. He said well, he spoke to Adam Pearce they're going to make an announcement soon on it. Also, at the uh, end of the show, the main event is Randy Orton versus Austin Theory. How do we get here? Because earlier, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller was looking on the phone and when Randy Orton got knocked out by Logan Paul. And Randy Orton comes to the back, she's like, oh, you know what I mean? That, that, that is funny. That is really funny because, you know, hey, 
Uh, he said, but you know what would be funny? Like, if I get uh, whatever you, one of you guys want to ring, it doesn't matter which one who, and I try to rip your, rip your head off, because that's going to be funny. Well, then, Grayson Wall throws Austin Theory under the bus. It says that he always said he wanted to have a match against you. He said, cool, Terry, then I'm going to see you out there tonight. And Terry's like, yo, why, why, why are you throwing me under the bus? We're getting further tension between Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. I don't know what is coming up, coming of it, but, but you see when Austin Theory was getting beat down at, in a elimination chamber and Grayson Waller didn't do anything to help him out. Well, we get the main event of Austin Theory and Randy Orton, which I think it was uh, was a pretty good match. And Austin Theory has these moves where he does like a roll before, like a roll of thunder. And he comes in with a drop kick or a blockbuster. He hit a blockbuster on Randy Orton, but there was one. Oh, because Mustafa Ali used to do this a lot of times also when he on the apron. And he grabs him a little bit. He slingshots himself in there and rolls through and gets a face buster or a, a drop kick or something like that. Well, he does that. And as he rolls in, Randy Orton catches him with an RKO. Good night. By the way, Kevin Owens is on commentary for this. So after the matchup, Hilarious. huh? Hilarious. Yeah, I like I said, I didn't get a chance to hear any much of the commentary, but yeah, that he wins the matchup. Grayson Waller comes out, and now we have uh them try to attack Randy Orton. Kevin Owens gets involved. Uh Grayson Waller gets hit with the RKO. Austin Theory gets hit with a stunner. Sells it like it like it was WrestleMania 38. And that Kevin Owens and Randy Orton staying tall in the ring. I mean, it's a decent main event. Where I think this is going, because I feel as though, like, Guther, okay, this is going to sound weird. Guther has more sense of many opponents to do a ladder match with, like a multi-man match. But Guther doesn't need to be in that kind of match. He needs to be in, like, a one-on-one in a kind of championship match. Because you got... So many people on Raw gunning after that championship. But the United States Championship, I think they're trying to create something so they can have an excuse to put in uh, Theory, Waller, Orton, Owens, uh, Logan Paul, and you know, and AJ Styles and LA Knight. Because throughout the night also, I didn't get a chance to say, LA Knight was looking for AJ Styles with the broken chair that he had the L- the. Uh, AJ Styles broke on him at the Elimination Chamber. He's been looking all over for him. Yeah. And as he's been looking for him all night. So I don't know what all these men, because they all kind of interacted uh, tonight, I think they, they may be trying to find a way to put them in a multi-man type of something. Maybe, maybe. Guys, that was SmackDown. SmackDown is a no question thumbs up for me tonight. And I'm pretty sure, Keith, you can agree on that. Hell yeah, bro. It was a good SmackDown. It man. was a, it was um, a good, good SmackDown tonight. Go ahead, your, your final thought. Especially like you know, just like like planting the seeds and all that, just you know, bloodline stuff. Yeah. Um, like I said, off mic, I thought the Dakota Kai thing would come a week later, but uh, you know, we got it now. That's is there, cool. Is, is there any reason why you thought it'd be a week later or, or no? I don't know. I just thought they would would they would milk it a little longer. Okay. Because we all knew she was trading on them. Yeah. So we I just thought maybe they milk it a little longer, that's all. Uh-huh. Um But you but hey, but you know to come think about it, it's it's crazy to think about it, but we are like just a month away from Mania. Like that quick. It's like wow, it's just it's coming fast, bro. Yeah. It's coming real fast. But go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, that was it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Okay. Well guys, post our comments down below. How you guys feel about SmackDown? What would you guys feel about the new night one main event? At WrestleMania, I'm actually excited for it. So post that in the comments down below. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed our review. Hit the subscribe button for more WWE, W2K24, wrestling, pop culture, and all kinds of content right here on NC Studios. Once again, it's NC in a place to be. Children, Mr. A and D, and the man, the myth, the reality, the revolutionary freshman flow. All right, y'all be good. All right, and the Nerd Coalition is out.